Okay, so now let's talk about uh, closure properties. of context-free languages. Now, when we talked about regular languages, we talked about closure properties of regular languages. Now, uh, we're going to talk about closure properties of context-free languages. Now, context-free languages is a larger set of languages. Now, it's uh, you know, you can draw a picture like this. So you have regular languages and you have context-free. So if a language is context-free, it may or may not be regular. So every regular language is a context-free language. Why? Because you can represent it using a context-free grammar. So Regular languages are, the set of regular languages is a subset of the set of context-free languages. So context-free grammars can represent a larger set of languages, including regular languages. So regular grammars are a subset of the set of all grammars, special case, that represents regular languages. So we know that, uh, you know, when you have a, a language like... Uh, Okay, so L1, uh, W such that W starts with A. So L1 is a regular language, and it belongs here. Now, L2, uh, A N B N such that N is greater than or equal to zero, where does this belong? So this is not regular. We proved that this is not regular, but it's context-free. So L2 belongs here. So it's context-free. You can represent it with a context-free grammar, but you cannot represent it with a finite automaton or a regular expression. This L1 can be represented by a finite automaton or a regular expression. Now, is there a language that, is, that cannot be represented using context-free grammars? Yes, there are languages like a N B N C N, where N is greater than or equal to zero, and L3 is a language that cannot be represented even using context-free grammar. So uh, L3 is here. Later on, we will learn uh, a larger set of uh, formal languages that contains context-free languages. So. L3 is not a context-free language. Now, there is, there is also a pumping lemma for context-free languages that you can use to prove that a certain language is not context-free. But I'm not going to do the pumping lemma at this point. I'm going to uh, convince you intuitively that you cannot generate this using uh, context-free grammars. So the idea is, you know, this language was non-regular. We could not do it with finite state automata because a finite state automaton cannot count the A's and the B's and uh, ensure that the number of A's is equal to the number of B's. But we could do this easily with a context-free grammar. This context-free grammar, this grammar you know, provides you with a mechanism to count the A's and the B's to make sure that the number of A's is equal to the number of B's. But, so this is when you, when you need to count two things, you know, to count A's and B's and make sure that they're equal. But the context-free grammar is not going to help you count three different things. So it, you can count two different things using this technique, but you cannot count three different things and make sure that they are all uh, equal. So you cannot, there is no way using context-free grammars to uh, make sure that the number of A's and B's and C's are all equal. So the intuition is, intuitively, uh, with a grammar you can count two things and make sure they are equal, 
but you cannot count three things. And that's why this language is not context-free. So you cannot, there is no context-free grammar for this language. You can break this if you can come up with a context-free grammar for this. Try to think of a context-free grammar for this language. And if you come up with one, you're going to break this whole theory. <laughs> uh, okay, try to... <laughs> Uh, you will get an award. <laughs> you will <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, well, the, if, if, you can, if you can come up with a context-free language for this, this would mean that there is a bug in the proof uh, that people have uh, come up with to show that this language is, uh, is not context-free. So you'll, you'll, you'll show that there is a bug in their proof if you can come up with a context-free grammar for this language. Yes? Why wouldn't um, saying like A, B, S, C, or um, just skip? Okay, give me, what's the grammar that you want? Um, okay, give S me. S goes, uh, goes to A, B, S, C. S, C? So why wouldn't that work? Because every time it goes into S, it would do A, B, and C each one time. Okay. But will this give you, uh, this will generate a different language, so, or epsilon. So, so are we trying to find L3? You're saying yeah, was. does this generate L3? So let's, let's generate, let's see what this gives us. S gives A, B, oh, S. Oh, you want all the A's together and the B's together. Yeah. Oh, okay. that's So this is, this is going to give you A, B, sorry, this is A, B, S, C. And then you can do this to do more A, B, S, uh, C. All right, now I see. And then you can do an epsilon. So it looks like you know, the strings that you are generating here are A, B as one piece, A, B, then C. And uh, yeah, so you are repeating the A, well, this is A, B, A, B. You can repeat A, B, A, B. Then uh, C. So this is like A, B, A, B, uh, N, uh, C, N. Yeah. So, right? Is that right? Yeah. So it's, uh, you are repeating, you can do as many A, B's, A, B's, A, B's, but with every A, B, you have a C. So you are counting two things, basically. Okay. You are not counting three things. And so this is, this language is not this language. Okay, any complaint? Okay, so try to come up with a context-free. There, there is no context-free grammar for this. So, and this is not a context-free language. Uh, okay, so, so there are languages that are not context-free. But Context-free languages are closed under are closed under union concatenation concatenation and star. And in fact, this is, uh, this is easy to show. It's easy to show that uh, context-free languages are closed under these three operations. So if I give you uh, G1 uh, for, you know, G1, that's, uh, you know, V, T, uh, and with a start variable S1, and the... the uh, with a, with, with a start variable, uh, set of variables, uh, set of terminals, and a start variable. And what, what else do we have in a context-free grammar? Yeah, the set of uh, productions. We productions and S1. And I have G2 with, so this is V1, this is V2, 
this is the set of, well, terminal one, and production one, T2, P2, and S2. So I'm given two grammars for two languages, context-free languages, and I'm assuming that, you know, the variables that are used, the variables that I'm using uh, are not, uh, are two disjoint sets. So I'm assuming that V1 and V2 are disjoint. Uh, V1 and V2 are disjoint. In fact, I can, you know, I can assume that the set of terminals is the same, T1 and T2. Or you can do T1 and T2 and then you write T1 equals T2. Now, how do I generate a, a grammar for the union? Grammar for L of G1 union L of G2. What's L of G1? The language of grammar G1. So L of G1 is the language generated by grammar G1. L of G2 is the language generated by G2. So the union is an operation that applies to languages, not to grammars. So we're looking for a grammar that generates the union. How do we generate a grammar? How do we write a grammar that generates the union of these two languages? What's the union? The union is the set of strings that, are, that belong either to L1 or to L2. The set of strings that belong to either this or that. So how do I, how do I construct a grammar for the union? What's that? Well, there is no epsilon here. This is not a finite automaton. So what's the equivalent of, uh, of the branching in grammars? How do we branch? Hmm? Okay, but what should the start variable say? Hmm? Yeah, it's just S1 or S2. This is the unit. So if you, are, if you are given two grammars for two languages, you can construct a grammar for the union by saying S is S1 union S2, and then you combine, the, uh, you combine all the uh, rules, all the productions. Now, assuming that the, the set of variables are disjoint. Now, what about grammar for L of G1 concatenated with L of G2? So in this case, S is going to be what? It's going to be S1, S2. And about grammar for L1 of G star. How do you generate a grammar for Yeah, so it's going to be S1, S, or Epsilon. So it's very straightforward to construct a grammar for the union, to construct a grammar for concatenation, the concatenation of two languages, and to construct a grammar for the star of a language. Therefore, context-free languages are closed under union, concatenation, and star.